Hi there, class. I thought I'd do a little tutorial that is essentially what I was doing in class um, today that shows you how to take a lovely AutoCAD plan uh, and convert it into something you can fiddle around with in SketchUp. Uh, and obviously, place to start is your AutoCAD plan. Uh, I am uh, looking at, I believe, what is the floor plan for your first project with a few extra walls. Um, and one of the big things you'll want to do in AutoCAD is make sure that all of your lines meet carefully and precisely. So make sure that there's no little gaps that allow um, air to get out from inside the wall. Um, uh, I'll just fix that right there. Um, first of all, you won't be able to hatch in AutoCAD. Um, so if you are planning to use AutoCAD for your plans, uh, that'll be a problem, um, but it also will just make for a neater drawing when we get to SketchUp. Now, the really the, the steps here are uh, we're going to convert the walls into 3D, and then uh, when we do that, when we're done with that, we will um, bring them into SketchUp and uh, add some further modifications. Um, so the way to do that, what I like to do is turn off all the other layers other than the walls, and in this particular model, I don't know, what have you got? You've got a couple of weird layers here for doors and other stuff. I'm just going to turn all those off. Um, so now you can see I just have the walls. And um, if there are any uh, obvious openings in your um, project, um, for example, uh, right here, it looks to me like there's a, these two lines don't meet. Use something like chamfer to fix them. Uh, oh, there's another one. How about that? Sloppy, sloppy. Anyway, um, to uh, make the walls have a height, what you do is you select all the walls, and you can also do Command-A or Control-A to select all the walls, um, and you get their properties. And uh, the funny thing about um, AutoCAD is that it uh, dis ascribes height to a feature called thickness. Um, I don't know why it doesn't just use height, but that's the way AutoCAD works. Uh, but you can only apply height to lines. So make sure when you select that you just have lines. I'm going to go and try and reselect. Oh, there we go. Now I just have lines. I must have had some blocks in there. You can also choose from the drop-down list here uh, lines if you don't have only that. Anyway, now I can just come in here. Normally this number is zero, um, which means it has no thickness. Um, you can just type in nine feet and hit enter. And you might say, gee, that looks not different at all. Well, if you use the view cube to rotate your model around, you will see that you now have some height to your model. Um, and uh, we can even change the display of this model if we really wanted to. Let's use shaded with edges. And there you go, a beautiful 3D model. It's not perfect by any means. Uh, and there are a number of things that you can do to the uh, AutoCAD model if you see you're missing some element of the wall. And of course, we're missing things like the heads over the doors. That's stuff that's easier to fix in SketchUp. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna save this model. I don't wanna save, uh, I don't wanna ruin my original one. So I'm gonna choose Save As and give the new one a, a name that includes something like Export for SketchUp. Um, in the name so that I, I don't mess up my original floor plan, okay? In fact, this is probably a good one to do first. Uh, and I'm just gonna, I've already saved it as that name. Uh, now I'm just gonna jump right over to my friend SketchUp. Um, and uh, obviously I've already installed my software, so you'd, you'd wanna do that first if you haven't. Um, and SketchUp may prompt you to uh, uh, ask which template you wanna use. Um, you can just choose the architectural feet and inches template. It, frankly, it doesn't actually matter a whole lot, but um, architectural feet and inches will give us dimensions that are familiar to us here um, in the only country that doesn't use metric. Anyway, um, so here's my model, and hopefully you have experimented with all the tools and you know the basic ways to navigate uh, in and out by scrolling. Click and drag your scroll wheel to spin the model. Anyway, we want to import our uh, AutoCAD plan into this uh, project. It's actually pretty easy. You just choose File, Import, and you should be able to find your model. Now, the big thing to uh, with SketchUp, if you look here on the drop-down list of uh, for file formats, there are a large number of file formats that you can bring into SketchUp 
uh, including weird things like PDFs and Photoshop documents. But anyway, make sure that it says AutoCAD files before you go and browse for your file. And you can see here, uh, I have saved mine into a folder somewhere where I'll find it, which is good. Um, and uh, there are options that you can fiddle around with, but for the most part, you should be able to just import it. And it will probably give you a message that says, I've imported mostly everything. And just click off of that. And you should be able to see the same model that you saw in AutoCAD. And now it's in SketchUp. And you can see the same door openings and all that kind of stuff. Now, there's no floor, there's no ceiling, and obviously there's no doors or furniture or anything. Um, to modify this model, first of all, you uh, if you click on it, you'll see, uh, using the select command, you'll see that it's just one big object. To modify it, you'll need to right click on it and explode it. Any objects that you import off, this is very typical. And the easiest way to get a floor in there is actually to just draw a big rectangle. Rectangles are pretty easy to draw. I'm just gonna click on the rectangle tool and I'll start in one corner of the project and I'll draw it all the way to the other side of the project. And you can see how I can click and drag my scroll wheel in the middle of a command, uh, which is awfully handy. Okay, if it doesn't uh, draw the rectangle uh, for you right away, what you might want to do is go back to where this thing was a giant block uh, or group and draw the rectangle first. And in fact, I'm going to start on the outside corner. Maybe I'll have better luck. You see how now there is a surface down there and then you can explode it that way. Sometimes the rectangle thing works. Sometimes it doesn't. SketchUp can be a little picky about that kind of stuff. I'm not gonna draw the ceiling in yet because um, it gets in the way. You can't see in there. Now, uh, if you want something like a door, uh, that's one of the uh, more uh, typical uh, things that you'll wanna add. Um, uh, there are what are called components. And again, I think we, we talked about this in the opening uh, introduction. Uh, just go to the window, pull down menu and components. Um, and uh, with uh, SketchUp, you get uh, kind of loaded onto your computer a bunch of different samples of different uh, types of components. Uh, the architecture folder here is the one which will have kind of the basic stuff that we tend to use, uh, doors and windows and some basic sample furniture. It's not a huge um, library, but it is uh, definitely going to have a few things. So we'll just wait for it to load. Um, and uh, I'll just click on the doors section. And again, these sometimes take a little bit of time to load. Uh, depends on your system and if you have a hundred other things running or not. And there's some beautiful doors. Uh, and to load one into your project, you just click on it. And here it comes into your project. And doors like to be vertical. They like to go into surfaces. Now, I already have some openings in my project. So I just kind of move my mouse around until the door flips up. You see how um, it gives you a, a tool tip that says on edge. And that's what you want. Then just click when it's in the right place. If it doesn't happen to fit, um, or if it's not in the right place, use the move command to move it. Okay, so in this case, I believe that my door has uh, has not quite, uh, there we go, well, that's pretty close. If it hasn't quite fit the opening, like if the opening needs to be a little wider, use that push-pull tool to push-pull the other door. Um, and sometimes you get a little weirdness when you do that. Some of this is a legacy of kind of the AutoCAD way of creating things. But you can see now my door is a little closer to fitting. Um, to delete stuff, whoops, you can uh, use, uh, just select it and hit delete. You can also use the eraser. Oh, except I think I deleted my floor. Let's not do that. There we go, that's more like it, okay? If you accidentally erase a face, I've erased a face here. You can see how there's a hollowness to the wall. Often you can get it back in by just drawing a line. Okay, see how that filled in the top wall? And I can even fill in this top wall as well. Now you might say, hey, there's no head over the door. Um, a head is uh, what we is the term for the top of the door. 
And I can create a head by just drawing a line over the top of this door. I can even move the line down as long as it's going in that blue axis. I should be okay. And then I'm just going to use push pull to stretch that opening across to the other side. Okay. And I'm using the edge here to make sure that it's nice and tight. And you can even try erasing these extra lines, which really are just kind of left over. Okay. You see how now you have a door in there. And you can copy this door just by clicking on it. And I'm going to use Command or Control C and Command or Control V to paste. And I can paste it into multiple different spots. Anyway, so that's a quick way to generate um, some uh, geometry, uh, some uh, components in your space. Now, let's say you want some furniture. You know, a lot of you probably have furniture in your plans. Probably you're going to want to erase that, uh, the circles and lines and arrows and squares that you used um, and instead uh, use components. This is where the 3D warehouse comes in handy. And for 3D Warehouse, you can, uh, it's an online uh, warehouse of many, many uh, thousands and tens of thousands of models. Um, and you can search for just about anything. Like let's say your theme for your project is IKEA. You can just type in IKEA and there's all sorts of pieces of furniture. And uh, you can click on the image for more information. Um, and sometimes there's actually a 3D model that you can, you can spin around in a preview. Otherwise, you can just click the download button and I usually just load it right into my project. And there you go. There's your model. And these models can be moved around using the move command. And within the move command, there's also these little rotation grips. If you click and drag on those, you can move things in a number of different ways. You can even rotate things up. That would be a pretty interesting couch if it was up off the ground like that. Command Z or Control Z undoes uh, things that you don't want to do. So there you go. You can very quickly create um, some uh, space uh, spaces that are three dimensional. You can add some doors and windows are the same process. Um, if, for example, I wanted to put a window here, I think this might be a window in your project. Um, I can draw in a rectangle on this wall. It would help to know, you know how high the window is and all that. Then I can use push-pull to push the window through to the opposite side. Now what I like to do is use the end point on the outside of the wall as a reference. And that allows me to basically cut through the entire wall. At least it usually does. Let's try that again. I'll use the outside of this wall as a reference. All right, I guess I could just keep going. That's another way to do it. Um, usually that will cut right through it. Probably just a weird legacy of having used an AutoCAD drawing. Sometimes they behave or misbehave. Anyway, you can see here's an opening through my wall, and I can easily uh, slip a window into that. And if I need to, I can push pull the window opening as need be. Okay, and I can probably erase these extra lines. I would think. Well, maybe not. Anyway, um, so there you go. Now I want to make a perspective of this lovely space that I've created. Um, SketchUp offers a number of um, tools to help you out. Um, what I like to do is turn on what's called the large tool set. Um, because interiors uh, are actually quite difficult to set up sometimes because of the narrow, um, uh, narrow spaces, uh, they're much harder, I think, than exterior views. Uh, this large tool set has some special tools that we'll need. I'll just click to turn that on. Uh, and I'll drag it over here. I don't know why I drag it over there, but I do. Uh, anyway, down at the bottom are kind of these view tools that are going to help us out. So let's say I want to create a perspective view of this large um, space here. All I have to do, you know, I, you know, work on your model, add in your furniture, and you know, if you want some additional furniture here, I, I can move this and I can copy it um, around and and, and turn the other one in the other direction. And you know, you can have a whole whole lot of fun with these things. Then uh, once you've got it the way you want, use the place camera tool. That uh, looks like a little guy with an X or a little androgynous person with an X. Uh, and this is essentially your station point. So remember we talked about station points and perspectives. 
this is our station point. And when you put it in the project, it will put it in the project at a certain eye height. If you look down on the lower right, it tells you the eye height. And you can even type in this area and type in, you know, five foot two, and you see how the eye height moves, okay? You can also use some of these other zoom tools here. The walk tool walks, just click and drag on the space, and you will walk either in or out, depending on if you click up or down. See how that works? The eye tool, is what's called the look around tool. And what that does, you click on that tool and then click and drag the eye tool and that will uh, give you a different view of the space. You're essentially changing your line of sight, right? Remember that? So if I look, uh, if my line of sight is perpendicular to that back wall, as you know, I get a one point perspective. Anyway, uh, the other one that uh, I want to show you is this zoom tool here. It looks like a magnifying glass, and that allows you to just zoom in and out. Essentially, it's moving your station point uh, backwards and forwards, and it will usually stop at the back wall, or not. Um, and uh, I keep doing that. Um, with that tool, you can also change down on the lower right. Uh, the field of view. In fact, you don't even need to click in the lower right to change it. Just type in 55 and you see how it showed up there without me typing, uh, clicking in there. Just hit enter and wow, look how much wider my field of view is for this interior perspective. Um, so it's really nice. Now it actually looks like an interior. It's a little distorted as it gets close to me. Um, but in general, this looks like a pretty good view. In fact, I wish I could save that view um, and come back to it later, well, yes, you can do that. Um, if you just go to the View tool and choose Animation and Add Scene, you'll see at the top of your screen uh, something that says Scene 1. And what that is, is that's kind of, it's called a saved scene and it allows you to uh, return no matter what. If I fiddle around with the model, oh, I did all these crazy things, I just click on Scene 1 and it will return me to that view. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to save a scene looking this direction, and I'm going to use my little position camera tool, go to the exact opposite of the room. Now I'm looking at the corner. But I'll, after you click the position camera tool, it immediately calls up the look around tool because they're very commonly used together. And I'm just going to move myself in to the corner, and now I have a, you guessed it, two-point perspective. I'm looking right at that uh, corner. And, um, you know, maybe I want to zoom in or out, I don't know, it's a compositional kind of exercise. Then, once I've got another view that I like, just right-click on that first scene, and you can add a second one. And just like that, you can jump from one to the other. And this really makes working on your model so much easier because as you move things around and rotate and fiddle around with your drawings and here, we'll, we'll turn the, you know, turn this up so it's up in the air. Um, well, what does that look like from the other direction? I don't know. Oh, that looks kind of weird. Maybe I won't do that. Okay. Now, uh, the other nice thing is any changes made to the model um, will be reflected in these uh, individual scenes. So for example, if I try to draw in a roof here, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try my rectangle trick again. Oh, and I only got one room. Sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. Maybe it's because I have an opening here. Let's try to recreate some of these individual spaces. Eh. Oh, there we go. Now we've got it. You might say, hey, now you can't see in your model. Why, you know, why did you do that? I don't need to see inside my model now because all I have to do is click on this scene. Look at that. I can see inside or I can be inside my model without being able to see. And of course, any of these views allow you to edit. So um, if you wanted to, oh, I don't know, let's create a, a big ceiling, uh, a recessed ceiling. I can do that in this view. I can even paint materials and other things. Um, and all of those changes will be reflected uh, in the model. And that is how you uh, create a very uh, simple model from an AutoCAD project.